Well, welcome to Age Friendly here on Shaw Spotlight. Rebecca Johnson's my name. I'm the host of the program. And here we are heading into fall. It's hard to believe, but summer is over. And we certainly hope that you enjoyed the summer and all of the festivities that go on during that. And particularly if you're an older adult, that you're able to get outside because sometimes in winter you don't go out the same way. But our programs on Age Friendly here on uh, Shaw Spotlight really focus on seniors and activities and issues that are really related to older adults. Today, our program is going to be about a new resource that's available here in our community of Thunder Bay. It's called Age Well, a handbook and resource guide for older adult safety. My guest is Christine Jardine, who is the author and researcher of the, of the document. And Christine, you know, when you, let's just talk about the fact that we have a new document first off. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that you were hired, how did this? How did how did we get to the point that we we have a new document that's going to be a resource for Thunder Bay? Yeah. Well, I know they did the booklet. The booklet was last done in 2015, so mm -hmm. that's eight years ago, and right. a lot has changed since then. So the the Elder Abuse Committee um, had decided they wanted to update it and add a lot more to it, kind of start from scratch. And they applied to the seniors. I got to get the name That's of it. That's no problem. Go. Yep. It's a it's a longer name. The Seniors Community Grant Program through the Ministry of Seniors and Accessibility for them to support the costs that were um, associated with doing the booklet. And, and you, uh, when you were hired, yep, uh, to research it, what what does that do? What do you mean when you research? You had a book document you started with, basically mm -hmm. from 2015, so you had some base. So what did you have to do to research to get to where you are today? Well, first of all, I did. I talked to a lot of people. I I, I talked to the Elder Abuse Committee, um, Thunder Bay Police Services, mm -hmm. uh, Crime Crime Scene Crimes Against Seniors Division. I uh, went to the Age Friendly Committee and neighbors and friends that I know that are older. And we also, um, there was um, some community uh, meetings done, done in different parts of the community and there was some feedback from those that were given to me to be able to go over and think of some ideas to come up with for the booklet. And last spring, I attended the, uh, the health fair in March at the 55 plus center. And I had some of the rough copies that I had there right. and people, people were looking at that and I was asking them for feedback on the kind of things and what they thought should be in the booklet. So. I, I am assuming that there are other municipalities or uh, townships, et cetera, across the province, if not even across the country, that would have similar books. So would you have gone beyond Thunder Bay to get some information on this? Oh, I did, to okay. kind of get a general idea of some of the things that we were looking to put in here. I went and looked at some of the other booklets, like from Windsor, and and uh, there was a Toronto one. I think there was one in Barrie. So just kind of all over the right. place. So I think there was even one in Timmins. So, and I just went to get some... Um, typical kind of subjects to put into it, and that that people that people might want to see. Right now, the booklet that you did have was good in 2015. Mm -hmm. This is a booklet that's been researched and 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 written now in 20 in 2023. Its shelf life would be what would you think? I think maybe. Mm, well, it'll be it'll be good for about three or four years. Right. But also being aware that there will be other things that'll be coming up, especially in the financial section and the frauds and scam, because that that changes just, almost daily. And 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 let's let's just talk a little bit about what is in the book. Like you okay. know, it, I, I, I we have a, a table of contents, so yeah. we don't have to necessarily go through every page. But yeah. I'd be interested if somebody was interested, why would they pick up this booklet? Well, it kind of does a general overview of mm -hmm. the different forms of abuse, as well as gives some hints and tips on things to watch out for and things to do. Um, it also tells you how you can make it make yourself more secure at home with making sure you have the proper lighting and your mm -hmm. number, house numbers visible and all that kind of stuff and keeping your doors locked. It explains some things, which I found kind of shocking was I, I, there was a, there's a difference between a uh, home invasion and a home takeover. So it explains what that is in the booklet, what a home takeover is, and uh, how a lot of people have kind of fallen prey to that. 
Um, people also wanted to see things about powers of attorney and wills and their final arrangements that they wanted, mm -hmm. uh, what they wanted and what their rights were on what they could ask for and, and that kind of thing and, and how to go about making sure that that was put yep. into, people could tell. And then there's so many resources, like things that you can do, all of that kind of stuff that you can do to, to help keep yourself uh, from being abused or to stay active in the community. There's um, resources here, uh, like a lot of the things online that you can watch mm -hmm. and go to, such as your age-friendly TV. Right, yes. Um, and then there's other the other resources that they can call if they do run into trouble. Um, they can call some of the fraud lines and, and that that they can. So it's kind of an overall of everything. When, we're going to get into some specifics of, of what's actually in, in the document in the, ne in the next section of our program today. But when, when you're doing the research, sometimes, and you've got a book that's, that's, as I say, the life cycle is now maybe two, three, four years. What if numbers change? Like, but how, how, will, how will people deal with that? It could change. Phone numbers could change, for example. Uh, phone numbers, said, well, the majority of them in here are 1-800 uh, numbers, government numbers. Okay. So a lot of them are government numbers. Yeah. Um, as well, um, you, if, if they have access to the internet, you can always go in and just Google or, or right. search a, a, a place and you can get an updated phone number. I know addresses usually change a lot quicker than, than right. phone numbers right. themselves. So. But the other thing, too, is even if you have, I would think that if you have the, the name of the organization listed, yes. or it would be a similar one, or the fact that at least you can at least start as a, that would be a starting point for you. Yes, definitely. And really, really need that. The, the, do you anticipate people really using this document? Oh, I think so. Okay. I think a lot of people will. Um, people who I've already given it out to have said that it's great. They can look at so many different things and they've learned a lot from it, especially in the, uh, that um, older adults can still be all, fall under all of the different forms of abuse, right? Uh, and and the frauds and scams is so is such a huge topic, and we could only fit a few of them in here compared to what is actually out there. Right. So. Did you enjoy researching? Oh, I did. Yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot from it, definitely myself as I was doing it. So is is it something that you would consider doing again at some point? In time? Oh, yes. well, not necessarily on this one. Definitely. But, yeah, that kind of a. Of a, a, you know, that you really learn so much as an individual. Mm -hmm. That's important. why. That's why I enjoy the research part because I learn more and yes. I, I get to like just fill my head yeah. with with all this stuff and put it into the format that you've done here now. Yeah, yeah that was fun too. So yeah, yeah so that's important. So we're going to talk, uh, uh, Christine, a little bit about what's actually in the book so people would know. So we'll we'll have you come back in a moment and we'll join with Christine Jardine. Well, welcome back to Age Friendly Thunder Bay, and we have Christine Jardine, who is our guest today, and we're talking about a handbook and resource guide for older adult safety. And when we're talking about that, Christine, of course, was the researcher and author of the, of the document, and we're talking basically about elder abuse, which is a huge issue and mm -hmm. is growing in our community, yeah. which is really sad. But at the same point in time, uh, to try to educate the community about this document, Christine, mm -hmm. what's actually in it? Like, like, can you kind of give some highlights here? Okay, well, at the, be at the very beginning of it, we talk about the basics of, of abuse, like what, it, what the abuse is. Mm -hmm. There's some, some highlights. We could never fit all of it in yeah. what is actually abuse. But um, we talk about the highlights of physical abuse, um, psychological and emotional abuse, sexual abuse, the abandonment and neglect, and then there's the financial abuse, which is so huge. It's all about um, websites and all of the financial abuse that people go through just with um, aging, because mm -hmm. sometimes they have to ask for help from other people with their finances and things like that as well. And then the frauds and scams, and then there's the resources in here too. It's kind of an over an overview of it. We also have the powers of attorney and the wills in here, and then all of the resources about the ways that you can try to avoid being abused. And if you also, there's a section, a small section in here about if you know someone who's being abused, how you can 
try and help them right. out too. The, so. One of the things I noticed, I don't know what page it's on, but I was uh, flipping through here, was is that you even have a page for indigenous older adult resources. Yes. Which I found quite interesting. Yeah, there's quite a few of them here in Thunder Bay, which right. I was very happy to see. Um, there, they, the, a lot of the resources that they have, they help out all of the, mm -hmm. um, help them out with getting them associated with the help that they need and right. um, counseling and all of that kind of stuff as well. So. so very important. Let's let's go back to the fact, I mean, we know that there is abuse. That's a given. You've identified several of the areas, but physical abuse, what are you recommending if somebody is like literally hitting each other or hitting somebody? If somebody's hitting you, what do you do? <laughs> that's, I don't, that's a tough one because okay. it depends on the situation of it. Like uh, the, the police could get involved okay. in that one. Yeah. Um, the, and it depends. Uh, the police are always there to try and help you. Some of the, some of the things to do with the abuse they physically can't just take somebody in charge you have to be you have to want to right. so they can also play an intermediary in there and helping you to resolve some of those issues and getting counseling for yourself they have a lot of resources as well um, getting counseling for yourself getting counseling for the other person depends on if you live with that other person mm -hmm. and all they can remove the other person from the home that kind of stuff um, your best just to try and think about your own safety if something like that is happening and, and remove yourself from the situation if you can right. or yeah. get the other person removed. Yeah, and then that, that's so important. But you really have to look after yourself. You do, yes. Yeah. Yourself guess, first. Yeah, and I think that would that would follow similarly to sexual abuse as well. Yes, okay. definitely. So Definitely. there's resources in the book that, I, that that can assist you for sexual abuse too. Yes, yeah. there are all all of the resources in here can basically help with with that as right. well. So when when we're talking about, uh, I'm just going down this list here, but I'm I'm thinking about abandonment and emotional, um, you know, et cetera, and neglect. Unfortunately, uh, older adults uh, are abandoned by their families, yeah. uh, by friends, and all the rest, and they're isolated. They're by themselves. So how do you manage that? That can be a form of abuse. Well, it can be. Um, when they're talking about abandonment and, and neglect in here, well, neglect is, is a large one. If you, you can also be caused by um, a senior themselves yeah. because they may not be aware or may not want to admit that they need that help. Oh, so, of course. Um, that, that is a big, that's a big one there. Um, the, some of the, the abandonment and neglect was like taking someone out and just leaving them and they need assistance, like leaving them sitting somewhere mm -hmm. and they need assistance in that kind of thing. Trying, trying to stay busy and trying to stay connected with people. That is one of the big things to avoid things like that happening. Like me, sometimes the abuser will stop you from being able to use your phone or mm -hmm. uh, stop you from having contact with other people. Uh, but you need to try to stay in contact with people and keep yourself active, whether it's online or on Wh the whatever just a it phone is. call yeah. or somebody coming over to visit. There are programs I know 55 plus they offer a home visitor program where someone will come in and visit with you at home if you can't get out right. and about. There's there's many different different yeah, kinds they, of things. Yeah, like just picking up on that. They also have a program because I was just reading it in their newsletter that they will once a week people will phone you. Someone yes. will phone you. That is a yeah. good way of, as well. Yeah. So there are programs in our community to, to provide for that. Yeah. But when we talk about psychological and emotional abuse, what does that really mean? That can be that can be a lot of things. That's just for seniors, especially some of the like it kind of happens can happen all through our mm -hmm. whole eight, our whole um, age. But um, for seniors, especially, it can be things like you remembering something from the past, and that person is telling you that it's wrong. Oh, okay. They're trying to make you feel stupid, or they're trying to to say like, no, no, you you don't you don't remember it properly, and trying to make you question your own memory of things, making you trying to make you think that you might have dementia or something like that. There's those kind of things in there too. There was um, that there's the uh, yeah, there's like threats to harming you or your even your pets. They right. can oh, they okay. can they're Never threatening about that. to do yes. that too. 
Um, yeah, and then there's dismissing your feelings mm -hmm. as well. Like if you're saying that you're you're not feeling you're not uh, you're not very happy at the moment, you just want to talk to somebody, and they just right. tell you to get lost. And, yeah, and that right. So there's um, the oh that would this was another one too that was really. Uh, threats of institutionalization. If you don't do something, I'm going to put you in a home. Right. There's things like that. That happens a lot to um, older adults. Correct. So. And you know, there's uh, so many uh, older adults that are on their own and they need protection, which yes. is unfortunate, but they do. Yeah. And so there's, again, resources within this document to be able to provide for them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it's not hard to read the document. It's very, mm -hmm. very simple. I tried to make it larger print, yes, too. Yes, which is so, important. I know I need that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do, do we get to a certain age. So I think one of the things I'd like to talk about in, in our next segment, Christine, is the whole area about financial abuse, because that is significant. Yes, and I'd yes. like to get into that. So as we're, as we're moving along, we've got, we've got financial abuse and frauds and scams, which is also very uh, significant in our community. Yeah. And it's, and it's sad that we are at that point. People can take money from you. Like, yep. it's, and it, don't even know that that's even happening. Yep. Well, then we'll join, join us in a moment uh, when we come back. And Christine will be my guest. And we'll be talking about financial abuse. And make sure that you stay tuned. Well, welcome back to Age Friendly, and we're talking about the Age Well Handbook and Resource Guide for Older Adult Safety. Christine Jardine, my guest, and we're going to talk now, Christine, about financial abuse, because that's significant. And mm -hmm. there are so many scams out there. I don't know. I mean, you hear about the grandparents scam and this scam and all the rest. Tell us a little bit about what you found out when you were doing the research. Well, I did find out for um, between... Pardon me. Yeah, Besides okay. all yeah. the scams yeah. and that, there's a lot of other financial abuse that goes on, like even from like within families mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So you got to be very careful on who you're giving uh, power of attorney to and all of that kind of stuff and giving access to that stuff. Even your credit card. Yes. Definitely. Don't realize that somebody can abuse you yeah. using your credit card. Yeah. Okay. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. They can. They up. can. They can like wipe out so much, and then you turn around and you try and fight with, for try and get your money back. Right. Uh, from the bank is even very challenging too. I know the banks try to make it easy, but people have lost thousands and thousands of thousands dollars. Thousands of dollars. Yeah. And then get to a point where you cannot get it back, and yeah. you literally lost it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and that could be a person's life savings too. Yes. Right? So well, and some people don't even have a lot of life savings, so it yeah. can be it can be devastating. Yeah. Anyway, I, yeah. go ahead and yeah. tell us what else. So is there's in also like you need to keep watch out like financial abuse in the booklet. I included in everything in it, such as identity theft as well. So that would be making sure that you you're not your social insurance number and all of that are safe and to any kind of identification that people could get from mm -hmm. you so that they're not stealing your identity because then you could also have everything um, lost as well. So the banking and the finances, it's, it's like take care of it yourself if you can. Right. If you can't get out, there's the phone banking, telephone banking and um, the uh, online banking. But always make sure that you're you're checking all of your bank Accounts. statements and all the time. All of yeah, everything that comes in for that. Um, there is so many different kinds of abuse in here. There's all the tel the the websites and email mm -hmm. scams that come up, and there's they, the one of the things that really shocked me is. Um, I didn't know about was I knew about the little padlock on the websites when you go onto the, the thing and there's a padlock in the address bar that's closed that means that the the um, be it Google or Firefox or any of them they've checked out for security certificates on that oh. um, so that that's a more secure site if it has the padlock that's closed if you see one that's got a line through it or an exclamation mark that's one that they can't prove that they have a security uh, a security certificate. Would that be for even if you want to buy something online? Yeah, so absolutely. So you really need to look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Absolutely, all right, yeah. definitely. Um, a lot of people also fall into all of these um, scams through Facebook and uh, Twitter and, and things like that too because you get these little innocent questionnaires saying, what was your favorite thing as a child? What, mm -hmm. was your, what was your pet's name? And all, they're trying to get your passwords. 
Ah, okay. For they're they're right. they're trying to get like where was the first place you went to school or where were you born that all of that is they're trying to get past things that people might use for their passwords. Yeah. So, so then let's say can, something like even a a, a woman's uh, a maiden name and things yes. like that. So yeah. and then they can go in and access your money and everything else. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, that makes definitely. sense. Definitely. Yeah. And then the frauds are scam frauds and scams are really. Make, make me very nervous because there's so many of them. You have the things that, that other things that they can do, which are explained in the booklet, such as the phishing and spoofing. Mm -hmm. So that's making um, fake websites or and trying to get people to click on emails that'll take them to that fake website, like be it for Netflix or, mm -hmm. uh, or even your bank or a government place. And then you're putting in your personal information. Yeah. That's another way that they get that, that information. But I actually spoke to a couple of people when I was at the health fair um, about the grandparents scam. And they said they had almost gotten caught in it. Oh, interesting. And, and I, they explained to me the fact that they, they had a young person on the end of the other, on the end of the line, and they were going, "Oh, Grandma, Grandpa, right. I, I I need help right now. I I really need it bad. I need a thousand dollars because I'm in jail, and they want you to mm -hmm. take this money so that I can get out of jail because they've arrested me, or I'm in the hospital, and yeah. they not they want this money now, and you need it. and it because it puts you in a panic. <laughs> you think your grandchild's been right. is in trouble. It puts you in a panic. You don't even realize." That it's not doesn't really sound like your grandchild, right. um, and there's a lot of th that happens quite often. I'm I was really amazed at how many people had told me that they had almost gotten caught up right. in that. Now with this artificial intelligence, which I don't know very much about, mm -hmm. but now they can actually use the voice, which is very yeah. concerning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and then there's like there's. There's ways that you can try and protect yourself from that. Like if it is a family member calling, mm -hmm. call, like try and get a hold of them before you commit to giving any money. Try and get a hold of them or another family member at the number that you know is their real number. Like don't let the, don't call a number that the person who called right. you is, right. is giving you. But one, one of the things that we've got the document and yes. you've got a few of them in front on your front yes. of your scooter, which is great. So it, everybody can see the purple color. How do you get a copy of, of the booklet? Um, well, we, we're go the um, Age Friendly and the Elder Abuse Committee have multiple copies. Right. So you can go to the Age Friendly website and you can um, send us a, a, a message and let us know and we can get one out to you. There's going to be different ways that we're going to be going out to possibly different um, activities, activities yeah. and social Exhibits events with and, them. Yeah. And we want to be, we're, we're hoping to be able to do some education out in the community in the future uh, where we will have some copies of these booklets for people too. There is no charge for them and uh, anybody can get one. You just need to let us know how to get, like where you are. So And, and go from there. Because yeah. it, it is really a wealth of information. Yes, it is. You, I, I commend you for the Ooh. way you put it together. <laughs> Thank you. The research done. Uh, uh, it, it it's a valuable resource for seniors in our mm -hmm. community. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. It's it's yeah. And so people will want it. They can get it through the Age Friendly website, or they can contact somebody with Age Friendly and yes. get that from them. Yep. Well, thank you again. And I just want to just because we're going to come to the end of our program, I just want to mention a couple of things. One is uh, welcome back to the fall and to uh, fall here on Age Friendly on Shaw Spotlight. And if you have any suggestions about the show. You can go to the Age Friendly, and it's agefriendlythunderbay.ca, so it's very easy. And there's a little questionnaire. You can add, put anything down that you'd like to learn about, and we'll provide programs throughout the winter with that. And then also the Age Friendly will be holding their annual general meeting on October the 17th, and you're certainly welcome to get that information. And if you want to nominate somebody for the Senior Award, which I think the nominations are open till the very first part of October. You can do that as well. But anyway, uh, as, as we come to the end of our program, Christine, thank you very much. And we are going to turn our program over now to Linda DePiro for one senior moment exercise. So get yourselves up, ready to go. Hi, I'm Linda DePiro, and today I'm going to teach you some techniques of body tapping. We're going to start by finding our navel, and we're going to go high to the right and low to the left. I'm using my fingers, they're pretty strong, as I kind of stimulate around this area. 
Why we are going right to left is that's the way our digestive system works. From here, I'm going to use fists and pound the pelvis a little bit here, all the way around. And from there, the quads are pretty strong, so you can still use fists or you can use your fingertips coming down to the shin. Now, I prefer bare feet because you can tap your feet better. And I also like the idea of grounding with bare feet rather than shoes. Going down the inner thigh, I'm still using my fists, always tap the toes. So, fascia, it requires movement, hydration and body tapping. So this stimulates our, I'm going down the outside, soft skeleton and connective tissue, deep and also superficial. Coming up, you can compare your lower body to your upper body, wow. And then continue, soft tapping through the rib cage, right? Along the collarbone, the back of the head, coming up, branching out. We will hit certain meridian areas that are very sensitive, like the ears and the armpit, okay? So I'm just gonna do one arm. You can do the other one after, tap on top. You can either pound gently or tap. So meridian, like acupuncture points, it's been around for centuries. It has been proven to improve health and well-being. It can boost energy levels, better sleep, reducing stress, anxiety, strengthens the immune system. So keep on tapping and add this to your daily morning regime and before you retire at night.